Hey guys, welcome to another day, another video. And I have a couple of questions to discuss with you. And both the questions are from sequences. So what's a sequence? Sequence is also just like a function. It's a function of natural numbers from N to R. It's a function from N to R. So sequence basically means a pattern. So when you have certain elements written in a pattern, that set turns into a, a sequence. So for example, in this question, we have a sequence one, two, one by two, three, one by three, so on and so forth. So there's a pattern here, if you can see. What the question is asking you is this sequence. Is this sequence bounded above, bounded below, bounded or none of these? Now, bounded above, bounded below, bounded. Basically, we have to think in terms of boundedness, right? Boundedness, what do you mean by boundedness? So boundedness essentially means that it has two walls within which all the elements will lie. So that's what would be boundedness. Boundedness, you call a set bounded when it is both bounded above as well as bounded below. What do you mean by bounded above? For example, if you have a set of all real numbers, you are talking about the set of all real numbers such that they're less than say two. That means you cannot have any number which is more than two. So two and above everything is will be called upper bound. And you can say that this is bounded above. So you have a wall at the upper end and your numbers are not going beyond it. That's what is bounded above and bounded below. Now this set is not bounded below. Why? Because from minus infinity till two, till up to two, not including two, but yeah, up till two. So 1.9999999 1 until there, you, you can involve all real numbers. Minus infinity is not a finite number that we can see. Okay, that wall is something that we don't know where to put that wall, right? So we will say that this is not bounded above, bounded below, sorry. It is bounded above. But a set like, say, X is greater than 2, the set of all real numbers starting from 2, 2 and above everything. Now that means there is a wall. 2 is that wall. You are involving only the numbers which are more than that. So you have a wall in the beginning. So this is bounded below, but it's not bounded above. Now, giving you this recap, let's talk about the given sequence. So you have one, two, one by two, three, one by three. First of all, just try to see what the pattern is. What is the pattern? If you observe your first term, your third term, your fifth term, all the odd entries, if you observe, they are of the form, you can say 1 by n, where n goes to, goes from 1 to infinity. It can keep on going. So these are your odd, odd entries, okay? Odd entries. Now, if you look at your even entries, even elements that you have, that's, like just putting n, where n starts from 2 to infinity, right? It, because the even entries we are taking from here, so 2, 3, then would be 4, so on and so forth, right? So what do you observe here? As n would keep on increasing, n would go to infinity. As n would keep on increasing, what's going to happen here is that uh, your odd entries will be tending towards odd entries are 1 by n. So that would be tending towards 0 because it would become 1 by infinity. And as n goes to infinity, your even entries, because they are like n, it would just go to infinity. What is it telling you? It is telling you that at the upper level, there is no boundary to it. It is going up till infinity. Infinity is the biggest, right? But we don't know where to put that wall. So it's not stopping anywhere. It is not bounded above. 
it's not bounded above that means it's not bounded because when it is bounded it is both bounded above as well as bounded below you need to have both the walls it is clearly bounded below because all the terms are more than zero so it is bounded below by zero the terms um you know the odd entries they are getting smaller and smaller and smaller tending towards zero so you have all entries above zero but moving towards infinity so this is a bounded case this is not a bounded case sorry this is a bounded below case it's bounded below we will say that it's bounded below and actually it is bounded below by zero so clearly b should be the correct answer now, there's a question that I'm giving to you. Fine. This is mounted below. We have realized that. Is it convergent? Is it convergent? If it is convergent, what is the limit? So, first question, is it convergent? If it is convergent, what is the limit? Think about it and uh, give an answer to yourself and discuss with your friends as well, of course. Another question, now that we are, you know, I thought that let's just uh, bring in another question in order to revise sequences. If sequence A n and B n, A n and C n are convergent, they're convergent to say some limit L. The moment you say um, it's convergent to L, it basically means that Convergence is always checked as n goes to infinity. So basically, as n goes to infinity, a n as well as c n, they both are tending towards L. Okay, that's what it means. Okay. And you also know that there is some sequence b n, which is always in between a n and c n. So for all n, for all entries, like A1 is smaller than B1, which is smaller than C1. Similarly, B2 is between A2 and C2, so on and so forth. Then, Bn is not convergent. Then, Bn is the limit of Bn is 0 as n goes to infinity, which means that Bn is converging to 0. C is, Bn is convergent and the limit as n goes to infinity of bn is l, that is, it's convergent to l, or none of these. Well, if you've done sequences nicely, or even calculus limits nicely, then you should, should be able to answer this question. You should be able to recall something called the sandwich theorem. This question is basically nothing but sandwich theorem. So all you are saying is that there are two sequences which are both. This is say A n and this is C n. And as n goes to infinity, they both are tending towards say some limit L. And there is a sequence which is always in between A n and C n which is always sandwiched in between a n and c n. So as n goes to infinity, if it is always sandwiched between a n and c n, and I know that a n and c n are tending towards L, can b n go anywhere else? No, because b n is always in between a n and c n. It cannot go anywhere else. So that means by sandwich theorem, we clearly know that limit as n goes to infinity b n has to be L. It is definitely convergent and it, the limit is L. So C has to be the correct answer. I hope with this you will be able to recap on sequences and also series. Try to revise that as well with which which basically requires a knowledge of limits and continuity. So I hope this will help you out in revising all that. Thank you. <laughs>